Hello, hello, more demons here and welcome to another game played on Skilling Open 2020 online tournament and this game was actually recommended by general director of FIDE Emil Sutowski. He tweeted yesterday, what an outstanding preparation by Vidit uh, Gujarati. Wow, I played Greenfield for many years, helped the very top players, including two world champions, to analyze it, but I do not recall anything of the kind. Stunning. Check the game versus MVL from round 9. Now, MVL is Maxime Vachiel Lagraf, who's gonna play this game as black, uh, so definitely he's an expert, probably number one expert in a Greenfield defense. He played that in the whole his life, whole his career, Greenfield defense uh, against E4, he played um, some Sicilian defense. However, Greenfield against D4 is his uh, trademark, so definitely if you prepare something against MVL it has to be something very very special so let's see what happened on the board Vidit Gujarati as white open with of course d4 we have knight f6 we have c4 g6 knight c3 and d5 so this is this famous greenfield defense for those who don't know uh, we have c takes on d5 knight d5 e4 now kicking the knight and the knight instead of jumping somewhere of course take on c3 we have b takes on c3 and now bishop g7 so what is the idea white has very powerful center however what black want to do is undermine that center so there are a lot of um, actually tools for doing that for example c5 attacking this pawn that is the one of the ideas the bishop put a lot of pressure here uh, and so on and also you know the open d file also helps black to um to attack and there are some ideas also with the queen uh, on a5 uh, and making some pins here so in our game we have bishop e3 the main line we have uh, c5 knight f3 uh, queen a5 as i mentioned now queen d2 uh, so defending the c3 pawn and now simply castle uh, we have rook c1 very important move of course it's pa part of the theory the queen now defends a2 but this is important over protecting c3 and for very important reason because now what normally black play is something like rook d8 uh, so white gonna uh, push the pawn and after e6 the, this pawn cannot be taken because of the pin uh, but there are interesting variations after bishop g5 uh, black usually plays f6 and so on very sharp uh, but also very well known variations also what is possible to um, to exchange immediately c takes on d4 c takes on d4 and after exchanging knight d2 and this is also well known however here maxim vashella graf went for bishop g4 the idea of this move is actually to eliminate the knight which is defender of d4 so uh you know removing the defender is one of the motives in chess of course uh, this is why we have d5 there is no attack uh, anymore on the d5 no more pressure however now we have the pressure on c3 so now you know how important was this move with the rook over protecting c3 so all of this is of course well known as well uh, and here the main idea is bishop f3 g takes on f3 and then knight d7 c4 asking what you're gonna do with the queen and the queen can go to c7 to a3 or the queens also can be exchanged so this is pretty a uh, well-known theory however there is interesting thing maxim vachel lagrave want to still keep the bishop uh, on the board it doesn't look like very smart bishop especially after the next move of maxim he plays b5 now what is the problem with this move um, there is no problem this is part of the theory well known to both of the players because vidit played that before and maxim played that before as well so uh, this pawn is hanging and this pawn was actually controlling d4 so after bishop c5 it looks like this knight actually can escape to the to the d4 uh, we have rook c8 so this is the idea of that sacrifice that pawn sacrifice always something for something now look at this the queen and the bishop and the rook put a lot of pressure on c3 uh, and now 
if the bishop for example goes to d4 it's possible but white have to be extremely careful uh, because now after bishop f3 don't take with the pawn I, I mean it's possible but white have to be very careful because now if this bishop gonna take the bishop and this pawn takes then look at this rook can take on the c1 and the queen would be actually pinned so that would be that would be insane uh white would be totally lost so white have to be very careful the position is very tricky probably bishop g7 king g7 and only then g takes on f3 and this position of course is playable however it's very very uh, simplified as well uh, and this is not what vidit gujarati actually prepared we have bishop before kicking the queen so queen c7 and now knight d4 so knight is not attacked by the bishop anymore and this bishop looks a bit stupid on the on the g4 but this is also part of the plan we have now a5 attacking counter attacking on them on the queen side so now bishop a3 and now boom b4 so now if the pawn attacks on the on the b4 it looks like very strong move look at this bishop b4 now the the queen is under attack so what can go wrong actually black has a really strong move the queen on e5 now attacking the knight twice also attacking the pawn on e4 you cannot defend both so what do you would like to play is rook c8 and then this bishop is quite handy bishop c8 and now there is no way to actually defend both of of this uh, pieces so probably queen c2 and after queen d4 um, queen c8 bishop f8 the game can continue but white uh, probably have to retreat just to defend the, the e4 and so on for example e takes on b4 then bishop b2 it's still very very tricky but at the end black gonna have the passed pawn so um rook a2 and now bishop d4 uh, otherwise white gonna lose the piece uh, rook c2 king d1 now b3 and look at this pawn very nice asset for black so definitely black stands pretty good here and this is not what good Vijrati would like to have this is why he played bishop b2 but as i said he knows that position uh, and now we have queen b6 so moving the queen um from this harm way on the from the c file and now we have the one game in the database where c4 was played uh, and then after a4 bishop e2 then we had a3 bishop a1 and after exchanging everything here king e2 and white won that game so this is a uh, known theory this was played at least one time on the top level at least however vidit has his own idea here and he played bishop b5 very sneaky trap very sneaky trap because look at this the queen is watching and the bishop and also the knight which is defender is under attack so can the knight be taken actually uh, not really the problem is it's very nice trap because after bishop d4 white is winning here queen d4 and you cannot take that that bishop you just uh, have a losing position queen d4 now c4 attacking the queen and also um delivering the checkmate on the g7 and um, black gonna lose the queen so that's a very nice trap and even if black tries to for example uh, eliminate this pawn uh, it also doesn't work everything is under control what white have to play first exchange the rooks so rook c3 rook c3 bishop takes on c3 and after bishop d4 we have a queen d4 and again we're gonna have a, a checkmate so probably just exchange and white stands really really great with the pair of bishops with extra pawn that should be enough to actually win the game so this is why in this position we have e5 attacking the knight this way uh, and now if the knight moves then of course now bishop gonna be lost so this is why we have d takes on e6 and here bishop on e6 knight e6 uh, if queen e6 it's actually uh black gonna lose all the initiative um because it's still you know the bishop is still under attack so uh if queen e6 then white simply gonna castle and it's very comfortable game for uh for white for example knight a6 now c takes on b4 uh 
bishop b2, a queen b2, knight b4, and white has one extra pawn. Uh, so very, very comfortable game and simplified position. Uh, so this is why f takes on e6, and now we have c4 defending them, the bishop. And here is the trick. First, I will show you the game with Nepo. So Nepo exchanged them, the bishops, and after queen b2, he played knight c6. Uh, and then after queen f6, going after the pawn, uh, black had the move knight d4, defending, and also attacking the bishop. But now the bishop can go to the d7, attacking the rook and also attacking this pawn. And a very, very strong move. Now, of course, uh, c5 is rolling as well. And um, then c6 and Nepo found uh, this move. Look at this. Boom. Rook f7. Uh, maybe not the best move in the position because now what white have to find is actually c5. C5 is winning. So Nepo uh, rook f8 is losing. But first this c5 have to be found. Uh, and now of course the queen cannot be moved because the knight is under attack so uh rook f6 c takes on b6 and now this pawn gonna be very very power powerful however uh v did played queen e5 and now this is the difference because now nepo played rook f2 sacrifice the rook and after king f2 crazy game because look at this rook f8 with check king e3 now knight f5 Double attack, double check, uh, so king d3, and now queen e3, you'll see already how dangerous is that, a king c2, knight d4 with check, king b1, now queen d3, uh, and now king a1, rook f2, and it looks like actually Vidit gonna lose, but he found the way to continue. Bishop e3, and, and after king f8, couple of more moves, and he found the perpetual check, and actually uh, this was a draw, uh, but very, very sharp, very crazy, uh, actually very crazy game. However, Maxim Vashel Lagraf knew that game as well, and he improved. Boom! Rook d8. Now, what is the difference? First, the move is with tempo. Uh, and second thing, uh, if white actually waits and uh, avoid to exchange, the problem is now after bishop b2, queen b2, knight c6, there is no queen f6. Queen f6 is losing because now knight d4 and this bishop is under attack and the bishop cannot go to the, uh, to the d7 because it's... Uh, protected by the by the by the rook so that's a huge difference so both the players were definitely prepared uh, but now Vidit also knows that he can push c5 so in this variation uh, he knows all of the ideas attacking the queen of course the bishop cannot be taken because the rook is hanging uh, so this is why we have rook d2 so wait a moment it looks like Vidit Gujarati actually lost the piece because after rook d2, c takes on b6, uh, we have rook b2 and Vidit Gujarati resigned. Uh, no, he didn't resign. Actually pause the video and find the best continuation for white. It's not lost. White is down the piece. However, uh, white has also very beautiful continuation. Pause the video while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, you see that already? So if you see b7, I have a bad news. This is losing move because after rook a7, let's say, rook c8, it looks very strong. Uh, but after king f7, uh, what's your continuation now? Bishop e5, now attacking the rook. And if the rook is moved, this pawn is also lost. Okay, so now the rook gonna come to the b1 and win the rook or the bishop uh, can be attacked and win. So black gonna win the piece and win the game. If bishop d3 actually defending b1, then we gonna have rook d7 attacking the bishop no more square squares for the bishop uh, castle losing the bishop and so on so of course black is winning here so b7 this is not the move we are looking for but rather look at this rook c8 couple of days ago i show you the game where wesley saw against uh, jan krzysztof duda he actually paralyzed the rook and the knight but here the idea is different much stronger look at this 
Rook c7 now with the check, so we have king f8, and now boom, rook a7, trapping the rook and then pinning the knight. What an idea! The rook cannot be taken, of course, because b takes on a7 and white gonna promote and win the game here or here, doesn't really matter. Uh, so this is why MVL has to find another way of exchanging the rooks. How to exchange the rooks? Boom! Rook b1 with check, king e2, rook h1, so exchanging this rook for this rook. And now, what would you play in this position as white? Just, you know, watch at the position. What is the strongest continuation? Pause the video while I enjoy my cup of tea again. Okay, ready? So again, you cannot take the rook immediately because this is losing. Bishop e5 defends the, the knight. Here is the problem, okay? And now, for example, the pawn is under attack, so h3. Now rook a1, now this pawn is under attack and black gonna win the game. If bishop c4, then we gonna have a king e7, unpin the knight, the knight can then um, just go, for example, to d7 and so on, because the bishop not gonna control it anymore and it's completely winning for, um, for black again. So why? have to be prepared really prepared here and played f4 taking under control e5 very very important move and now black also is forced to actually defend the knight this way so we have rook c1 we have rook a8 and now rook is on time uh, on c8 uh, we have e5 now blocking this bishop this bishop is very unhappy so we have g5 undermining the base of this little chain so we have g3 g takes on f4 g takes on f4 and now bishop h6 going after the weakness so king f3 defending and now king g7 making a space for the rook because of course black would want to do is attack this weakness on f4 we have rook a7 with check and now this is the tricky part uh you would probably would like to go with them with the king to g6 and then f5 however the position is very tricky look at this a uh, king g4 and now bishop d3 and that would be the checkmate this is a checkmate so bishop g7 making a space but then bishop d3 and the king gonna be in the very ugly h6 square so for example rook e7 now going after that that pawn and how to defend the pawn you really cannot you can play something like rook c6 but then b7 rook b6 you can go after uh, but then bishop c2 first and then going this way after these pawns uh, at the same time still controlling these two squares because black pawns still can be very very uh, dangerous so for example rook c6 bishop b3 and after i don't know rook b6 this pawn gonna be lost and these two pawns gonna uh, gonna win the game uh, so this is why the king cannot go to g6, have to go back. Very sad, king g8, uh, and now rook c7, now challenging the rook, but the rook, of course, um, don't want to be as exchanged as this pawn would, would win the game. So this is why we have rook f8 now going after the pawn on f4, but also the white rook is on the time uh, and defending. Uh, and now we have bishop g5, is the pretty shady continuation, actually, the continuation bishop g5 is not losing move however after king g4 what maxim vasilla graf should do uh, is move the bishop uh, back and now the reason is that this bishop can stay on the on the h6 together with the rook it's impossible actually to defend that position here so that would be probably a draw uh, very difficult to find the plan for white maybe something like this attacking the pawn but it's not enough and if white push too much this actually is losing for for white so for example king g7 bishop b3 now the knight can be activated and now if the rook is moved then of course rook gonna take on the f4 and if the rook is moved for example d4 uh, to attack the pawn the problem is knight c5 just defend the pawn still attacking the bishop so a uh, bishop c4 and now black gonna have the winning uh pawns on the on the queen side so f4 and now what what white can do 
just try to get some counterplay in the center so for example b7 sacrifice the pawn or exchange the pawns for the central one uh, but after knight c5 let's say bishop c4 there is still very beautiful tactic for for black uh, actually i would like to, to ask you for to post the video if you are the big fan there is a very nice winning tactic but it's very very difficult as well but you can actually try so post the video for the third time um in this video and then find the winning move of this sideline for black if white push too much this is beautiful one so uh i'm gonna enjoy my cup of tea one more time so the winning continuation here is actually believe me or not boom bishop f4 exchanging the bishop for this pawn and now the point is that after rook f4 bishop f4 king f4 black have the winning move the only winning move is actually a3 not b3 but a3 and now why it's so because b3 is inevitable and it cannot be stopped uh king e3 then b3 is coming bishop b3 knight b3 and of course the knight cannot be taken because of the promotion so king d3 knight c1 with check a uh, king c2 knight a2 and after king b3 uh black is completely winning knight c1 king a3 knight d3 now taking these two pawns and of course the knight together with the with the pawn is gonna win the game so white cannot push too much bishop h6 was the way to go however maxim vashir lagraf played the losing move boom bishop d8 and now vidit has his chance but how to continue pawn on b6 is under attack so b7 and now bishop b6 uh, threatening for example to go with the bishop on the on the e3 but also can come to the a7 to support the knight if needed and then the rook can be free so we have rook c8 now pinning the rook otherwise the rook would want to come to the f7 and pick up the pawn now it's not possible so we have king g7 and now the rook would like to go to f7 and win the pawn however white in this position has a winning move so pause the video for the last time for the fourth time in this video and find the winning continuation for white this is only one so uh, it's very very difficult and tricky however uh, yeah if you find it definitely you're gonna be very happy while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so exactly in this position there is only one winning move and it's bishop c4 going after the pawn the first thing the pawn cannot be defended because uh, f6 of course is controlled by the by the white so bishop f7 but then f5 is coming and the pawn is actually pinned so it's gonna be taken for free it cannot be defended so it doesn't work rook f7 going after that pawn also doesn't work because rook b8 uh, and now after bishop a7 um, rook a8 the rook goes to the b7 and now the problem is this pawn gonna be lost so uh bishop e6 and these two pawns gonna win the game at the same time the bishop controls um the way of this of this pawn so black would be just too slow so it doesn't work as well and finally bishop e3 the most active so activity uh, for the win but it's not enough king f3 going after the bishop bishop d2 uh, and only now bishop e6 rook f4 so exchanging the pawns this way but king e2 now bishop c3 stabilizing the position of the bishop uh, going after the pawn uh, but then we're gonna have rook g8 with check and then the king has nowhere to go i mean all of the squares here actually i con uh, are controlled uh, by the white pieces so king h6 very ugly square for the for the king is the only way and only now rook b8 and after bishop e5 then for example um rook e8 now rook f6 
uh, bishop c4, uh, let's say, and and black can actually take one pawn, but at the end have to give up this bishop, and that's gonna be also winning for white. There is the bishop for two pawns. Uh, it's still a lot to play, uh, but I believe that Vidit, Vidit actually could win that, and uh, with his technique, he's really experienced and a good player. Uh, maybe in the rapid he could have some some problems, uh, but actually theoretically it's the is the win for for white and um, and yeah so bishop c4 is the winning move but vd this time didn't find the strongest move in the in the position and he played king f3 and now this is only a draw first bishop a7 so bishop um, e3 is not possible this is why vd went for the king f3 uh, but there is another way bishop a7 defending the knight and now the rook is free to go uh, so rook f7 and winning the, the rook and uh, and that's gonna be at least a draw so this is why we have bishop e8 taking under control f7 but now we have knight a6 so moving the knight um, away from from the from this uh, cave and gonna be more active piece uh, this is why we have bishop b5 saying okay are you sure you want to go and mvl ca just calculated that it doesn't gonna work so uh, he just go back and we had the threefold repetition and that was a draw in this position in exactly after these moves it was a draw now what would happen if the knight actually goes to c5 it's still very very tricky however the engine says that it's better for white so what could happen let's just see knight c5 then of course uh we're gonna exchange the pawn for them for the bishop um, and now rook c5 so we have the opposite colors bishop but black have also these two pawns uh can they be uh, dangerous not really uh so for example bishop a7 rook c2 bishop d4 uh, king e4 now bishop c3 this is the square for the bishop uh, and now let's say bishop c4 still going after the pawn so rook e8 of course the king king f7 doesn't work at all uh rook g2 and now with the interesting idea of bringing the rook this way so for example king f8 rook g3 now a4 rook h3 and the king can always go to g7 this is why it's still unclear uh, then for example a3 white would have very nice move a3 and now the pawn cannot be taken because the bishop gonna be lost so probably black would have to wait with some rook e7 a takes on b4 bishop b4 now bishop a2 making a space for the rook and the rook would like to win maybe maybe this way but it's still you know a lot to play for example h6 let's say rook d3 uh king f7 going after the pawn rook d4 and what now rook b7 just saving that pawn and this also doesn't work because now we have this f5 we already know that that's not gonna work uh so it's still why this is gonna be better it's still very difficult this was quite a long line so of course there are um, another lines where the, where where this pawn can be pushed so it's not always clear if black can sacrifice something uh still very very tricky position but probably knight c5 was losing at least at least um, in the opinion of, of MVL, it was better just to do threefold repetition than, uh, than risk, especially this, these pawns uh, would have the problems against the light square bishop. So uh, in my opinion, that's uh, everything could happen. But this bishop c4 in the, in the moves before uh, would win the game. So did it in the rapid time control, couldn't find that move, but still very beautiful uh, game. And Emil Sutevsky said that it was still Stunning and I completely agree and also uh, if you would like to drop some comment about that game just please do it I really enjoyed that game and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss other games from the skilling open 2020 we already have the knockout face press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one